Welcome to Into Pittsburgh. I'm Christopher Whitlatch, your host, and each month on PCTV 21, we get to know an organization that is making a difference in our community. And we invite you to get involved. Let's get into Start With Art. Joining me is Matthew Conboy, the founder. I ask you, what did it feel like when you were first introduced to art? What if you had always grown up with it? Matthew's going to show us what that might be like. Uh, start with art. How'd you get it started? Um, where'd the name come from? Well, Start With Art aims to create the youngest art collectors in the entire world right here in Pittsburgh. Hey, one, one sec. We've got to start over. Sorry. And five, four, three. Welcome to Into Pittsburgh, Matthew. Tell us a little bit about Start With Art. How'd you get it started and where did it get its name? Well, Start With Art aims to create the youngest art collectors in the entire world right here in Pittsburgh. Each month, about 275 babies go home from the hospital with an original signed work of art from a local emerging artist. Uh, the name for it actually came from the director of the nonprofit that gave me the money to start this program. And who is that? Uh, that's Crusade for Art. Um, they're located in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's run by Jennifer Schwartz. So what gave you this idea to, to, um, to uh, you know, start these young art collectors from, well, since they were born? Uh, there's actually a, a couple of reasons why. Uh, the first is when I moved to Pittsburgh about nine years ago, uh, I was teaching as an adjunct at Robert Morris University. And I had students in art classes that had never been to the Carnegie Museum of Art, um, the Mattress Factory, the War Hall, let alone galleries like Space or Future Tenant Downtown. Um, I wanted to be able to give these kids an 18-year head start on the students that I had at that time. That's, that's wonderful. Um, so you said uh, 275 babies this year. So it just started in 2015. We started January 1st, 2015 with three hospitals, uh, the Midwife Center, St. Clair, and UPMC Mercy. And how, does, how do they get to participate? Uh, with the Midwife Center and uh, St. Clair Hospital, uh, it took literally five minutes to come to terms with them. Um, I sent them an email explaining the project, uh, letting them know about some of the artists. Um, they wrote back asking if I was actually going to take photographs of the babies. Um, I assured them that they were actually going to go home with an original work of art, and uh, that was that. Um, so how do you manage to um, um, deliver this to the family that, that has the baby, and how do they take it home? What's the process? Uh, with the funding I received, uh, I was able, able to buy packaging for all of the prints. They come in a, a really nice heavy-duty uh, Ziploc type bag. Uh, they have a, a cardboard backing inside. They come with an information sheet about the program, the artist, and the work of art. Um, and I'm able to bundle all of that together and deliver them to the hospitals each month. Um, once I deliver them there, uh, I go over with the nurses about each work of art and the artist. Um, so then before the families go home, uh, the nurses are able to... Uh, that's, that's so cool that... Uh you'd be able to walk out of that hospital and you have your first piece of art for your child. That, yeah. that is wonderful. Yeah. I think we should share some, some of uh, that art because, I mean, this is not, you know, that this is, you know, high-end artists actually participating with you in this. So um, you're in your last month. Uh, do you have that? Uh, yes. It's, what's going out this month right now? It's a, a piece by Ryan Lammy uh, called The Opening. Um, Ryan is the director of Radiant Hall. It's uh, artist studios in Lawrenceville. 
Um, but he's also doing a lot of work finding space for artists all around town. Um, uh, as an artist, he's uh, usually a painter, sculptor, mixed media. Um, but I felt that a lot of his work uh, could be translated photographically as well. Uh, so I was really happy that he was able to wrap up this first year of Start With Art. And you're going to give us a preview of 2016's first month, January's art as well, right? Exactly. So uh, right here on Into Pittsburgh. In, in fact, when I show this uh, to the artist later today, uh, it'll be the first time he's seeing it in print, um, which is really special. But this is uh, Mount Washington landscape, and it's a view from Mount Washington that we normally don't see. Uh, we're normally looking out on the city, and this is kind of looking back at, at Mount Washington itself. Uh, but it's a really beautiful print. Uh, it has a, a landmark on there that I think most people would recognize as they're going down 376. That's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Beautiful. And that's by Jake Reinhardt. Um, he's uh, a local photographer as well as a, uh, a lawyer. Oh, that's an interesting uh, mix there. <laughs> yes. um, I think you get that a lot in Pittsburgh. Where you have a day job and then you have your, your night uh, passion. Exactly, exactly. Um, how did you get such you know, great artists to participate with you on this project? So uh, when I originally started uh, applying for this grant from Crusade for Art, um, it was in April of 2014. Uh, I started calling around, asking some artists that I knew, uh, but I also cold called some artists um, that I, whose work I respected. Um, I thought that their um, Paintings or sculptures could translate into this medium, um, but I might not have had a chance to speak with them in the past. Um, I'm really happy to say that no one said no to me. That's excellent. Uh, in fact, they wanted to get started immediately uh, before I even had the money uh, to, to run this, this project. Um, but they wanted to be able to give something back to the community. Um, as part of this program, I'm able to give an honorarium to each artist, which... Oh, excellent. Um, uh, I felt very strongly about being able to pay these artists for their work. Um, but for them, they're growing their audience almost exponentially. Um, each work of art goes home with that one baby. Hopefully that baby has two parents, um, maybe siblings, extended family, neighbors, friends. So a lot of people are seeing these pieces as they're hanging over fireplaces or in baby albums or in babies' rooms. Mm -hmm. Did you get, do you have some feedback from the parents at all? Are you able to close that loop uh, since I know the nurses are, are really providing the delivery in the hospital? Mm -hmm. uh, so each print goes uh, home with my email address. Um, I've had parents actually uh, email and text me photos of their babies with the art. <laughs> um, and what's really special is in my own neighborhood, um, when one of my neighbors gets to go home with one of these pieces um, and is just uh, blown away, excited by this gift, uh, but in some cases had no idea that I was running this uh, just a couple doors down from their, their own house. Excellent. Is there like a particular story that comes to mind that, that someone had such a, you know, a phenomenal reaction to this program? Yeah, uh, it was uh, with, uh, at Robert Morris, uh, they were going to be doing a story about me on their website, and it wasn't until they interviewed me and I was telling them about the hospitals uh, that they realized, um, that he realized that his wife was gonna be giving birth um, <laughs> the next week uh, at the Midwife Center. Um, so to be able to you know, talk with me about this project and then realize that they were gonna have one of these prints. Um, luckily, the print was by a, a fellow RMU uh, professor, Christine Holtz. Uh, so it was really kind of this nice loop mm. uh, between the university that's, and the community. That's kismet right there. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so excellent. Um, what's your hope for this uh, project going forward? Um, so as I said, uh, we're working with these three hospitals um, in 2015 and 2016. Uh, they were really excited to jump back on board, stay on board with me. Uh, for 2017, it's really my hope to expand it outside of Pittsburgh, but also uh, expand it within Pittsburgh. Uh, we have UPMC McGee Women's Hospital as well as West Penn. Uh, if we do that, we would have about 17,000 babies each year uh, going home with art just in Pittsburgh. Um, and I actually crunched the numbers 
and realize that when these first babies turn 18 years old, um, if we are able to expand, continue expanding here, um, in 18 years, more babies will have art than people who actually live here. Oh, that's an interesting number there. Um, so to be able to put art in that many people's hands. And that, um, that really raises the, the education level for an entire population. I, I think that's, that's really amazing what you're doing there. Um, so what do you need to get that expansion in 2017? Uh, I need people to just really find out about the project. Uh, the local media has been very good about covering this uh, at the beginning of the, the year. Uh, but I just want people to ask for these photographs. Um, you know, it's great to receive it as a gift, but I also want them to just expect it um, and, uh, you know, kind of feel, uh, feel that need to have art. Excellent. So how can people get involved with um, Start With Art? Um, where can they find out some more information? So we have a website. Um, the website has links to all of the artists' own um, artist pages, and that's at www.startwithartpgh.org. Um, and that's a, a, just a, a really great resource. Um, it has all of the prints online, and the thing that I'm most excited about is that about halfway through this year, I got a, a small grant from the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council to translate each of these photographs into written descriptions. Oh. Um, that's for babies and family members who might have visual impairments. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to hire a poet to uh, compose these descriptions Excellent. of each photograph. And those, that's on the website as well? That is. I think that, that would be very interesting for our viewers to check out. So definitely check out startwithart.com and, and, and take a look at the art, but definitely read the descriptions too. I think you'll, you'll get a very unique perspective if you do that as well. And that's uh, startwithartpgh.org. Sorry, startwithartpgh.org. Thank you for correcting me on that one. Um, how about on social media? Uh, we do have a, a Facebook account. It's uh, facebook.com slash startwithartpgh. All right. So <clears throat> switching gears here, first and foremost, you're an artist yourself here in Pittsburgh. Um, what's your background? Uh, it's a fairly varied background. Uh, I had an undergraduate degree in architecture from the Catholic University of America. Um, my master's is in design and photography, and then I just completed my PhD in interdisciplinary art from Ohio University. Um, my art is usually on the conceptual end, um, abstract, but uh, thinking more about ideas than what's in the object itself. Um, but I do have, uh, uh, I'm part of a couple shows opening up uh, this month in December, continuing through January um, at Space Gallery, as well as at Chatham uh, University. Excellent. So we can check out uh, your art while we're running around the city here in December. <laughs> exactly. Great. Um, have you found Pittsburgh to be supportive of artists? Absolutely. Um, the support that I've seen here, both from um, nonprofit organizations, family foundations, and also just artists themselves uh, blows me away. Um, uh, I think I've gotten just about every grant that the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council uh, offers. Um, they've been uh, incredibly supportive of me, um, family foundations, um, and then also just individual artists. Uh, Kate Hansen, who works at GPAC, um, works on creating dialogues among artists, Daryl Kinzel. Um, uh, do you find that uh, Pittsburgh is very receptive to your art, art in general? I believe so. Uh, you know, we have this, these wealth of cultural institutions here, and I think that sometimes we just have to realize that people from around the world come to the Carnegie, they come to the Mattress Factory, uh, they come to the Warhol. Um, Sometimes we just have to remember if we need to go there as well. So we, we have uh, some of the best in, in the world right here in our own backyard. Exactly, exactly. Um, and you're definitely, uh, Start With Art is definitely helping, you know, raise that appreciation for art at a very young age. What are some other things that Pittsburgh should be doing to um, uh, help artists or help um, uh, more people um, 
get connected with the arts? Mm -hmm. uh, I think many of the uh, social media campaigns that uh, these museums are running um, are helping with that. Um, the Warhol has this um, book hunt uh, going on right now where you can find these hidden books around the city. Uh, that's creating some excitement. Uh, but I think also just letting people know what there is um, here on tap. Uh, so what advice might you give to um, another viewer out there that maybe wants to start something um, of their own like you did with Start With Art? Uh, it's really, uh, don't be deterred, but then also don't dream too small. Um, when I first thought about this idea um, in 2014, when I thought about funding it, um, I never in my wildest imagination thought that I would be giving art to every newborn in the city, um, <laughs> or even 3,500 of them. Uh, but it was something I believed very strongly in. Um, I probably wouldn't have taken no for an answer, even if I didn't get this original seed money. I think it was too important a project to leave behind. Uh, so, you know, it, everything can be done. Um, it's just a matter of finding that willpower. Excellent, uh, excellent advice on that. Um, in addition to um, some of the funding you've already got, you're participating with uh, New Sun Rising, who was a, a guest on the show previously, mm -hmm. um, in a new program called Arts Mode. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what your experience has been? Yeah, so Arts Mode is functioning as an incubator for these nonprofits or um, even organizations that are trying to get off the ground. Um, I thought I was a perfect candidate for it, uh, so did they evidently. Uh, but I think what their major mission is, um, is to help us get either fiscal sponsorship where we can start accepting donations, uh, but also put together um, a strong um, winnable uh, grant, uh, grant proposal. Uh, so that is what New Sun Rising uh, does every month for about six months with us, uh, just slowly. Um, going through these different kind of crawl, walk, and run phases of the grants process. Um, are you originally from Pittsburgh, by the way? No, uh, I was born in Washington, D.C. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up in London, England. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where I really got my appreciation for the arts and museums. Um, every single weekend that we lived there, my parents would take me to a different museum. Uh, granted, London is slightly larger than Pittsburgh. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But um, it was that expectation that you know we're going to experience something new every single weekend, and I think that just kind of put this um, little kernel in my mind that you know it can be done anywhere. And what brought you here to Pittsburgh? Uh, my partner uh, was offered the first job while we were still in grad school, uh, but it wasn't my first time visiting Pittsburgh. Uh, when I was in, um, at Virginia Commonwealth studying for my master's, um, I'd heard about this place called the Mattress Factory on the north side. And I would come up here about once every two months uh, as a day trip, uh, driving five hours each way, uh, just to, to see the city experience these neighborhoods so that when uh, my partner Heather was offered the job, um, you know, I knew that there was only one place that I was willing to live and, and that was on the north side. Excellent. So, um, so we're happy that uh, you ended up here in, in Pittsburgh and are doing such, such interesting and great things for our city. Um, what's coming up? What's, what's you know, looking beyond this? Well, um, we know uh, expanding Start With Art. What else you got up your sleeve? Uh, continuing to work on my own artistic projects. Um, a lot of my themes deal with space and place as well as identity. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out, um, you know, how to shape those concepts around some of my photographs and, and video and, and collected sounds. Um, Does the North Side or Pittsburgh influence that in any way? Uh, absolutely. Um, with where I'm located, um, I'm, I'm directly adjacent to um, uh, the Mattress Factory as well as City of Asylum. Um, so I think having all of these artists walking around my neighborhood on a daily basis 
um, kind of gives me the opportunity to pick their brains and talk with them. Um, it's opportunities that you know, not everyone has, uh, but I, I make sure I take advantage of those. Uh, but no, Pittsburgh uh, uh, has been very helpful, especially because it's so close um, to a lot of these other larger cities. Um, it's not out of the realm to go to Washington or New York or Chicago for a weekend. Certainly, yeah. Um, tell me, what, what's the most interesting thing that you've found here in Pittsburgh? The most interesting? I think a lot of times we take for granted um, when we live here, um, things that we have. And you've already brought out, you know, some of these gems that, that I don't, you know, that not everybody realizes that are there for us. But um, as, as someone that's, you know, hasn't, uh, didn't grow up here, what, mm -hmm. what, uh, what did you find interesting about Pittsburgh that we might take for granted these days? Oh boy. Um, actually, uh, you driving around, within five minutes, I can be on a farm walking through a pumpkin patch. Um, I can be in the middle of the woods. Um, and this is all five minutes from living practically downtown. Um, I think that's just uh, amazing um, where when I was living in Washington, D.C., five minutes would be going one block. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's interesting to me because I, um, I tell that story a lot too. Um, I, uh, after um, high school, I went to New York and lived in New York for 10 years before I came back to Pittsburgh. Um, so I'm, I'm one of our rebounders. Um, and my New York friends always ask me, well, what's so great about Pittsburgh? Um, and I says, well, you know, it has everything that a major city has. Um, you just have to get in the car to get to it. Um, which is different from if you're in you know, DC or New York or something, you, you know, you have those choices right, right outside your door in a lot of cases. But you brought that extra level to it is that you can change your scenery so quickly here as well. So you can get out to the you know, outdoor uh, amenities that we have here, or you can get out to a uh, farm and get you know, fresh from the farm produce here. Whereas in other cities, that might be a couple hour drive right, <laughs> just right. to you know, get anywhere near that. Um, so it's, it's one of the benefits that I think we do often overlook here in Pittsburgh. Um, so what else should we talk about uh, in regards to um, your, your artistic work or uh, Start With Art that we might have missed? Well, when I originally started Start With Art, um, it's photographically based. So these are all eight and a half by 11 inch prints. Um, but that's not to say that all of the people creating this are photographers, um, painters, sculptors, uh, I actually have a writer and poet um, producing so, something for next so year. So how are you, um, so let, let's back up. Mm -hmm. How do you translate, first of all, the sculptor or the painter? Um, do, you, uh, do you step in and photograph that work or do you? No, and that's something that I asked them not to do. Um, I wanted them to make something that might influence their work, uh, photograph that. Um, or it might be a preparatory stage ah, within okay. their work. That's interesting. Uh, so uh, Kara Skyling, uh, a great printmaker, uh, created these beautiful photographs. She actually called herself a picture taker. Um, you know, she wasn't even uh, comfortable with the term photographer, <laughs> but her photographs looked exactly like her print work. She'd never used the camera before, but her work translated that easily um, to this medium. Uh, Terry Boyd another great local emerging artist who's actually down in Miami right now with Art Basel, um, took a camera when uh, he went overseas um, to Nepal um, with uh, these doctors. He was gonna be their artist in residence hmm. um, and he created a photograph over there um, even though he's an embroiderer, a fiber artist. Huh. Um, so, uh, well, I think that's, maybe that's, before I get to that question, I'm, I'm gonna come back to that question. <laughs> um, how are you translating a poet well, into a visual space like this? So uh, Jessica Server, um, she teaches at Kappa, uh, but she also does quite a bit of freelance writing. Um, thinking, uh, just bouncing ideas around, but maybe having some type of like magnetic poetry hmm. um, or having the words, um, you know, kind of scrambled around on the print. Um, she's still thinking, she has a few months. She'll be in <laughs> July. <laughs> um, which is the month that she requested. We'll have to bring that one back in July and, 
and uh, show our audience what you came up with. I yeah. hope so. Um, so talk to me. Uh, I think I, I may have stumbled on to, to something when I was saying, I kind of, uh, I put you in a box as an artist there. Um, I called you a photographer. Um, for an artist, is there, you know, a, is it normal for somebody to work in multiple mediums rather than the, you know, maybe their strongest medium as well? And could you tell us about that process a little bit? Yeah, I think more so um, now than ever. Uh, people are able to switch among these different tools, whether it's a paintbrush or a camera or a computer um, or a hammer and nails. Um, but I really see no distinction uh, between them. It's about communicating an idea and whatever is the best way to do that is... Then you pick the medium based on that. Right. Uh, that makes sense. Is it, uh, it, does it help your creative process to sometimes step aside and, and, and look at it from a different medium? Oh, yeah. I'm always trying to get new perspectives, um, approach my work from different angles or these themes that I concentrate on. Um, I just got a 3D printer in my studio, so now I'm playing around with that, creating kind of 3D photographs or what a 3D photograph would look like. Excellent. Um, so before we get out of here, uh, let's, let's tell people how to get in, in contact with Start With Art one more time. Okay. Uh, that would be www.startwithartpgh.org. Um, if you would like to go on Facebook, it would be facebook.com slash startwithartpgh. Um, my email is matthew at startwithartpgh.org. Um, and I really highly encourage your viewers uh, to use my email address if they're having a baby this year or next year um, at a hospital that's not participating. Um, I don't want to keep any baby from receiving this just because they aren't born at one of my hospitals. Excellent. So definitely, if, uh, if you're expecting sometime soon, no matter uh, where you plan to have uh, that bundle of joy, give, uh, give Matthew an email and uh, he can uh, start him with art. Uh, give us one final thought as we leave here. Can I give you two? Give us two. Okay. We'll uh, break the rules for you, Matthew. <laughs> Uh, I think if I had to reduce this project to a tagline or two taglines, um, we're a city of champions here. We're also a city of culture. We can't forget that. Um, but I also want people to remember that art isn't just um, a privilege. It should be a right. Um, everyone should have access to the arts and art. Excellent. So thank you so much, Matthew, for coming on into Pittsburgh today and uh, sharing Start With Art with us. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to thank my guest, Matthew Conboy. If you enjoyed this episode of Into Pittsburgh, then hit that like button and leave us a comment below. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you're into. Maybe you have an idea that you want to make happen here in Pittsburgh. Leave it in a comment on YouTube or tweet to me, at CS Whitlatch, with the hashtag PoundIntoPGH, and we just might feature your project on an upcoming episode. Thank you to PCTV21 and those that make this program possible. See you next month where we will get to know another local organization and how we can get involved and make a difference in Pittsburgh. I'm Christopher Whitlatch, and this has been Into Pittsburgh.